Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to yet another video cast of uh, Lemnis, where we talk with global thought leaders from space of marketing, digital transformation, uh, communications, data, and martech strategy. Uh, I'm Shalaka. I'm I'm part of the customer success org at Lemnis. Uh, today uh, we have a really esteemed guest with us, Darshana Shah. Uh, quickly introducing. Welcome, Darshana. First of all. Uh, Aditya Birla Health Insurance. She comes with over two decades of industry experience across marketing, brand management, uh, innovation strategy, and so on. She's had multifaceted experience in retail, IT services, as well as insurance industries. Uh, amongst others, her uh, professional experience spans across other large organizations like Future Group, uh, Shopper Stop, Reliance Retail, etc. Uh, Darshana has also been receiving uh, consistent industry accolades and uh, just recently she also won a uh, leader of the year award at uh, Aditya Birla Health Insurance. So welcome again Darshana, it's really our pleasure to have you here today. Thank you Shalaka, yeah, it's my pleasure to be on the platform. Uh, our second speaker is of course Subra Krishnan, he's the CEO at Lemnisk, uh, a leading customer data platform company with real-time marketing automation capabilities. Welcome again, Subra. Uh, so diving straight Thanks. into uh, our topic for today, uh, which is customer data at the heart of MarTech strategy. Right? Uh, so Darshana, to just to begin with, uh, you can briefly uh, just you know talk us through your professional journey. And obviously, there's a lot that has changed in MarTech over the last two decades, right? But from your particular perspective, if you can uh, walk us through how that was for you, that would be great. Yeah, so yeah, thanks. So well, when I started my career around you know, almost 21 years back and uh, marketing obviously has been accidental. It's not that really I decided to do anything as marketing coming from a you know Gujarati business family. The whole idea was that eventually you're getting married. This is that I wanted to dabble my hands and that's how I happened to do. But yes, I was, when I you know joined marketing, that era was all about marketeers looking at ATL, BTL, the, that was a time when, you know, all your um, TV was uh, very, you know, the hot and sexy. Every, every marketer wanted to do a TVC. And that's a time when so the entire marketing world was around uh, driving your, uh, you know, large messaging, more branding, but uh, and more generic, more about the product, more brand proposition. But through ATL, which you would do, you know, TV and radio, outdoor, uh, those kind of large screens and that was where you were and print of course so that's the world when I started and I have uh, had uh, been a long duration in retail so retail was also very print heavy a lot of offer driven and all and so you know, initial years it is all so ATL, BTL, printing those kind of uh, things so last decade is when you've really really seen things moving and how which is when the last 10 years were things have completely changed. You suddenly data became very big, big data analytics was the buzzword uh, eight, so no, eight, nine years back. And that suddenly became very, very important. And how much do you know your customer and how do you start looking at that customer as an individual and not like the whole generic spray and, you know, play sort of methods. And uh, suddenly then of course, after that one after the other big data and then analytics, and then came the entire world of digital, digital has completely changed the game and made it more so the whole world became uh, very fragmented. Media became very fragmented. Lots of channels, even if you're doing media planning, the whole D2H came in and you know all of that started coming in media and specifically with the digital, the entire, entire game changed, the kind of uh, KPIs that you were looking out, the kind of you know measuring matrix change. And with uh, digital came so many other mediums. So, I mean, literally, you uh, know, we were uh, doing large screens, 30 second to now the screen is almost the phone in your hand all the time. Uh, you know, your uh, second digits have come down from 10 second Facebook, uh, you know, thumb stoppers to six second YouTube bumper ads. And in all of that, you have to give, give your messaging. So obviously you can see the, the entire lens changing for a marketeer that what we used to do and what we are doing currently, so much of different kind of planning tools, of course, what comes What's exciting and interesting is there are many, many marketing or martech tools that was available earlier. We didn't have so much, you know, you're looking at, yeah. you know, the TAM for the, this thing and your, uh, your standard, uh, you know, news print had its standard, this thing. So it, it was not that you were looking at so many other matrix or so many tools. 
the world has completely changed and what has also changed along with this is uh, suddenly content has become the thing so everything content. around is content you really want to all the time and now uh, you know during covid time you just, just see because the, the power is in your hand the screen is in your hand you are no more a family watching that one uh, you know 40 50 60 uh, so, you know it just screens anymore the, it's in your hand and it's so it's so much more personalized today at home and specifically in this covid time what i am watching on my screen and what my husband is interested in and what my son does you know 11 year old kid is very different he wants his and and that is how you see the whole ott platform coming up so now yeah. today as a marketer i mean look at the amount of planning so the world from a uh, atl btl to me the world has become omni channel uh, it is no more uh, you know planning a 30 second tvc but you're planning a audio visual av is the way you're going and it can be 30 it can be so you're planning from a 6 second 3 second to you know as big as you know and, and 30 second is too big in a digital world today people want to consume in 15 seconds and 20 seconds so the entire telling your story bringing your brand story out or bringing your you know, whatever you want to is first of all a lot of storytelling it has to be in seconds it is bite size nothing is you know any more big and content is the king everything is almost in your hand so it doesn't matter what you're doing all it's just the world of avs and that's what people are consuming so yes it's very interesting the world has changed and so has so much more in technology and for us i would say that uh, customer data on one side and content on the other side so the relevance personalization and relevance is the key today yeah so yeah that's all we are yeah. Darshan, you you've also had a, a sort of uh, you know you made this very interesting sort of shift from retail into into insurance, right? So looking back, I think in these four five years, of course, uh, you know a lot has evolved. I think the uh, like you rightly said, digital is exploding, and I think we've seen a big shift in the last five years alone, right? So just in terms of how, uh, for example, maybe if you could co compare contrast the uh, you know the the motion and the cadence of the retail industry from a digital ma marketing perspective uh, versus let's say what happens in insurance and how do you where do you see similarities and where do you see some of the differences uh, any thoughts on that no oh, yeah, big time it's it was a big uh, mindset mindset shift for myself you know the entire lens because see retail what retail marketing is all here and now it is all about consumer consumer is eating and breathing in your stores it's also very hyper local it's all about a catchment game and you're constantly seeing what's on the shelf, what they are buying, yeah. what's what more, one more in the basket. Uh, and obviously you're running your loyalty program. So a lot more on data modeling, RFM, but everything is about the consumer directly. Uh, and, and you want consumption, you want abundance, you want them to yeah. keep coming and you want them to keep buying. And, you know, so it's a very different game. Whereas when, and suddenly yeah. when I came to health insurance, my, complete that thinking is the health insurance industry is first of all driven by intermediaries so you are not reaching your end consumer directly you are going through all your channel partners and it may be a bank it may be your own proprietary channel so first of all to know about your end consumer you are driving it through an intermediate and you have to keep training them to reach out you know to what a proposition you want to speak about so that was a big game changer for me to begin with also, the uh, you know the other thing is that in uh, insurance you are it's it's not a tangible product it's an intangible benefit yeah. what you are buying to for your future protection your future peace of mind and a product that you are buying which you actually don't want to use so it's it is it is almost a buy and forget category you buy that you know and you you put your envelope or you don't most of the times don't even open the health insurance the you know the packet that comes the policy docket people don't open they put it in their locker because obviously you don't want to be hospitalized so it's an entire different game suddenly that you know you you are selling something which is intangible people don't want to open it people don't want to use it unlike in retail you want them to keep buying keep coming to you so you're constantly creating contextual events in retail. Contextualization is very, very important because then you're celebrating days and creating. So a lot of retail created days, right? All these Mother's Days and Women's Days are actually a retailer created excitement, including the Valentine's Day, you know, and similar, but in health insurance, the entire category changed. But the excitement with us is that we are also focusing a lot of health in health insurance. So we are also trying to drive engagement but yeah, that's that's been a huge difference from me. That's something where you're drawing abundance. Here, there are many things that you have in a policy, but you don't want to talk. 
a lot of anti selection so you don't want uh, you don't want all kind of customers coming to you you want the right profile of customers coming to you you know so so the, the game completely changes but what does what commonality you know i do see both in retail and in health insurance the uh, obsession about customer the obsession about knowing your customer so definitely um, and that's why looking at data and you know der deriving insights and looking at segmentations because that remains common both now whether i was doing yeah. rfm modeling and what more in the basket and stickiness and in the loyalty to your uh, and i know one of your segment was around data and analytics and so the data is is the power that we have as health insurance because everything that i can engage with that customer is by understanding the behavior the data the medical history the behavioral you know um, insights the digital behavior the mindset so that entire yeah. thing i mean i think to me that remains the same yeah and so, so darshana the data part i mean i would like to sort of focus over there because that's all the more important right when you mentioned that uh, the industry is so fragmented in terms of the value chain uh, a lot of the data is owned by others uh, as against you know you as the health insurance provider so then it's all the more important for uh, those one on one meaningful relationships to get formed and at least at lemnis uh, we believe that starts with uh, owning the customer data right uh, at least starting with a foundation and then building ground up so one thing we would like to understand from you is what is that foundational strategy and how are you trying to build it up at uh, abhi right now so see like i said uh, you know this category specifically health insurance has uh, you know if you still speak to consumer they will call it mediclaim or they will call it medical health or medical insurance it's still stuck there you know people are not even calling it health insurance and the reason being because the category by and large has become uh, you know you buy and forget because you also so that's the area where we wanted to change as a you know as a brand as an when we as a when we entered four years back and that's why when you want to engage with the customer and you can only engage if i know the customer indi individually and i understand the customer's behavior so this is not any more a game of only getting the you know the demographic data which anyways you will get because you know from which you will in health insurance because it's priced that way so the policy is priced as per your age band so which zone are you or which you know town are you from and all those kind of data you will anyways have what we want to add to it is so all your medical history which also because of your claims and you know you have to do pre medical tests and all that you will get so once this kind of data was there to engage with the customer we also layered the, our entire strategy around their health behavior so and that's why the you know we have a very strong uh, health and wellness ecosystem we have a, a very strong front end consumer application so that's how consumers engage with that and that's how your health behavior that you know how active are you what kind of whether your steps your sleep your heart your you know all those kind of things today you know when the variables that you are wearing So taking it through wearables or partnering with, you know, Apple Health, Samsung Health, Google Health, all those kind of various wellness partners, and we have so much more. So it, your your physical wellness, your nutritional wellness, your mindfulness, and this is the areas that we play. Your mental wellness, and this is where we we do capture data, obviously with customer consent, and that is how we look at customers. So the behavior is now not just any more another. health insurance behavior keeping just your demographic or your psychographic but it's a understanding the consumer individually as is is or her mindset and their behavior and their digital consumption on top of it so we also have partners through which we understand the shopping behavior their mobile behavior their travel behavior uh, all all of that so all of that put together now is so much more rich so today i have Uh, not just your you know demographics and your psychographics and your now i also have your digital behavior i also have your medical history i also have your health yeah. behavior now keeping all this in mind so that's why of course customer data platform is very important because if i have so much of data which means i need that one view of a customer and the the right triggers that how do i become relevant relevant what kind of communication will i you know and how do i engage because engagement is a big thing for us so in in an entire customer life cycle the lifetime value we want to keep engaging with them and not just when you buy my product and when you claim or renew these are not the only three stages but throughout how active you are so we do a lot of work around keeping a customer active and healthy and there are tools that we have created a lot of proprietary tools and we keep engaging giving them reports giving them 
uh, you know, insights and, you know, um, guidance how to stay healthy and how to stay active. So for this entire en engagement, obviously, so we need data and that's where, uh, that's how we are uh, working differently. No, I, I agree. I think uh, all of these data sources, right? Uh, and I think that's, uh, you, you made a passing reference to uh, CDP and how important it is, right? And I, I think, uh, I would say the, the expert has spoken here already. So I, I can maybe bring the slightly technical uh, sort of perspective here, which is, I think, you know, the uh, on the ground level, this boils down to connecting your website, app, email, let's say your CMS, your CRM, uh, potentially your social uh, channels and, and maybe your programmatic channels with these kinds of uh, maybe, maybe data that's coming from your DMP, right? And I think in the case of insurance, uh, in certain cases, uh, you know, especially for life, for example, we might have to add uh, a contact center or an agent CRM into the mix, right? And I think the important thing for me, uh, at least that's sort of been our big learning, uh, is that oftentimes, uh, you know, uh, all of this data, you know, in the past, at least used to, uh, you know, sort of get stitched uh, for multiple stakeholders in the organization. So it's too often we would hear things like, I already have a data lake, or I already have a CRM or an EDW in place. Uh, you know, why do I need something uh, that, like a CDP? And I think none of these systems were actually exclusive uh, to customer experience. And I think in this day and age, going back to everything that uh, Darshana uh, sort of spoke of up until this point, uh, you know, owning the CX is so critical uh, that I think a purpose-built system uh, that really brings these sources together from a digital marketing uh, perspective, you know, is critical. And I think that is uh, really uh, the key, at least as, as, as we saw it. True. So, uh, uh, that's not... Please go ahead. So, yeah, I, you know, I know uh, I've had a few discussions with you around... Uh, you know, around the notion of a CDP, and I think Shalaka was also going to ask you the same thing. But just talking a little bit more about uh, the CDP, obviously, uh, you know, uh, we've heard this, uh, you know, the, it's these three three letter acronyms so many times in the industry now, uh, CDP and, and, and DMP and, and CRM and all these other systems, right? So how do you see, um, uh, you know, CDP as being different, if at all, number one. But more importantly, uh, you know, in, in some of our earlier conversations, I remember you say, saying uh, that you uh, believe that there should be only one centralized system of intelligence, right? Uh, why do you believe that, you know, maybe if you could talk us through some of these points, that will be incredible uh, for the audience as well. So, Subra, like, like, you know, like I'm saying that this is all also new for us as marketeers, all this CDP and DMP and so many different, different platforms and so many different, different, you know, people coming in, talking on top of it. We also have the campaign managers on one side and then there's our own CRM, obviously, because we have to stitch everything through. See, one thing very important is at the end of it, customer and customer experience. And so the customer moment of truth. So what, what is important to me when I look at it, that when we had done the entire customer journey, we've designed the entire customer journey and we've spent a lot of time doing the inciting, understanding the customer pain points, creating customer moment of truth. And we've pitched the whole journey. And obviously that journey has been managed by various stakeholders in the organizations, which is one internal part. And externally also you are getting at different moment of truth with different kind of data of the consumer behavior because the behavior and what I'm getting at onboarding, what kind of data I get when a customer is starting to use the applications, his health data, his or her health data, the claims data. So there are various, various things coming in. So that's why as a marketer, it is very, very important for me to when I'm segmenting, you know, my customer, it's very important that when all of these data points have to come together and that's why I do believe there has to be one, you know, the data lake or the one entire CDP platform, like the you know, customer data platform, which is giving me that one consolidated view as a marketeer so that we understand what are the kind of uh, segments of customers and what are the micro segments, what are the micro moments that are coming out. And at the end of it, like I said, also because health insurance is a yearly renewable product. So, you know, if I, so we have to know and, and, and we want to engage with the customer during that entire period also want to help and manage their health. So it's also important that when I'm, I'm interacting and engaging with the customer, so we uh, like, like, for example, when we're onboarding the customer, how much time does it take when a customer is coming on our website, seeing, going on the code journey and suddenly dropping off, then there has to be a caller who's calling up. 
So all these kind of touch points and you know has to has to be real time today, has to yeah. uh, you know, has to come in play, and everybody who is connecting to the customer should be able to see what was the last, where did it drop, or what was the last issue with the customer, and to pick it up from there. So today yeah. people don't have uh, you know I mean, and there's so much more competition outside. People are bombarded. all the time and one thing as consumers that people don't have patience anymore look at what also in covid because everything is on your fingers right you can you can you know start tweet, tweeting if you're not happy about something you can start putting on facebook you can you know do everything today so we all are living real time and if this is a consumer behavior consumer is impatient consumer wants what he wants and he, he is very clear that what you give me has to be the experience that i'm looking out for it is it has to be relevant to me not to everybody but just me so he yeah. obviously how can you do something like this if you're not aware about the you don't get the customer view you don't understand the customer likes and uh, the moment of truths and you know all those kind of things so to me that's why this is very important that it all comes together and so we can create some very relevant uh, campaigns out of it communication out of it or basically everyone and be there and the consumer is with us Take them more in our environment, create the stickiness, and that's why personalization. Today, nobody likes to be called as dear customer. You, I have to talk talk to you as a dear Subra. I have to know Subra very well. I have to know your, you know, likes your health. Be if I am saying that I I manage your health, then I have to know about you. I have to know about your health. I have to give you relevant guidance. So we also have a lot of paramedic medics. We have law. We have wellness coaches and health coaches. so on this data they actually call up customer they talk to them they engage with them they give them the entire health and wellness counseling so if i have to do all of that obviously one has to have all of these things coming together and different kind of views for different teams who are managing the customer so i think that's why it is very very important today got it yeah, actually darshan of uh, one of my next questions was going to be you know uh with the entire stitched customer data and of course that slowly and gradually builds up what are the kind of uh, you know marketing innovations or the different kind of business use cases that you probably want to try out in the near future but i think you just covered a host of those uh you know and and at lemnis also we see a lot of cross functional use cases across marketing some even around product adoption uh triggers to crm and then you know signals back and forth so on so uh before we sort of go to the next section uh, anything else you wanted to cover subra before we jump to the no line? i think uh, again uh, darshan's uh, view points and uh, sort of use cases were so spot on here and i think if i were to latch on to one of uh, one of those points that you, that uh, you know that she was mentioning earlier about customers today having uh, you know that that option of potentially going on twitter and and maybe just talking uh, immediately about things like that i think that is where uh you know uh, something like a cdp or having that uh, uh, sort of real time view into your customers uh, can become so important like for this customer who might have gone and uh, maybe uh, ranted about their experience uh, you know it's it's for example important to stay in touch with them uh, all through the rest of their uh, policy term for example like and maybe uh, you know 60 days before uh, a policy expires or 30 days before when they start researching or you know when they are thinking of renewal Uh, you know what can we do? How can we make sure that if they are searching for any competitive uh, sort of plans on Google, uh, you know, can can we actually bid, uh, you know, bid higher on them or or make them some sort of an offer, plus pay them in some meaningful fashion, and and sort of try to you know uh, bring them back. So I think those are all, you know to to be really be able to do all these things uh, in micro segments. Uh, that that is the key, uh, according to me. Yeah. And also to be very candid, it's not that I have all the answers. We are also discovering. we are also meeting partners and we are also trying out stuff we are doing because there is so much out there even in fact the martech is also now so many tools available and so many of these three letter words that we are also figuring it out so it's not that i have all the answers we are also learning as we are you know moving around but one thing i know very very well that customer experience matters the most in this category i mean it matters in all the categories and today because customer is uh, constantly bombarded and you know it it is all by size time that they have with you you have to capture that you know micro moment and you have to be relevant to get the customer stickiness and that's why all this thing is very important but yeah we are yeah. learning we are also and, and simple things like for like the other thing that uh, that i noticed was like and i think you touched upon that as well is for example uh, you know does the uh, does the agent or the contact center or whoever is trying to 
uh, sort of close the transaction? Do they have all of the behavior uh, that the customer exhibited on the website? Because those little things matter to be able to be able to walk into a conversation with the client and and with a priori knowledge of not just the uh, you know plan that they've expressed interest in, but potentially other plans that they might have researched, right? Or or anything else that they might have done on the website. So look at articles they might have read on the website to be able to factor all of that into the conversation you know is so incredibly insightful from a uh, from a customer experience perspective as well so i think uh, th that also i remember you touched upon right so and yeah also what happens is that it empowers that you know the end user who's talking to the customer it makes a lot of difference when the contact center for agent is talking to the customer or the renewal agent is talking or or it's a claims or you know, my care manager is talking or it could be the wellness coach if I am aware a little more and I'm, I have, then the engagement and the connect with the customer is uh, is much more meaningful. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, they, they feel more empowered with the knowledge and they, yeah. that's why the experience, so that's why, you know, like, let's say now if I'm buying, I, I, I enjoy shopping from Amazon because when I speak to them, I find the guys are much more empowered. They, they can exchange, they can take returns fast, even if it is against the policy and that kind of empowerment will only come if, they have the customer data behavior. I'm sure something that's about the it. Yeah, the, so they know. So that's why they're empowered. I think that's what makes a difference. Yeah, Amazon's uh, customer obsession is legendary. I mean, it's built into everything they do, actually. Right? Yeah. And if you have to be a customer obsessed organization, which we are working towards, if customer is first for us, that means your last mile guys have to be empowered. And you can only empower them if they have the awareness and the data point of the customer they are interacting with. Otherwise, there's no other way. It will always yeah. go back to the hierarchy and you will always have that kind of a chain where you know, things are always delayed. And today, customers don't have patience for that. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. And, and talking about patience, we are just coming, starting to come about, uh, you know, outside the pandemic now. Uh, so, so, just to close, Darshana, I wanted to uh, take your perspectives on, uh, you know, how business strategy for you guys sort of transformed very briefly uh, during this pandemic. Of course, it might have had some lasting consequences for a while on health insurance, right? The way digital insurance products are structured, the way end-to-end -end journeys are done and so on. Uh, so, yeah, if you can uh, shed some light on that. Yeah, I think this has been the very, very interesting times for everybody, but specifically for a category like health insurance. And, uh, you know, and as a marketer, I can say that because coming from retail, which was very, very consumer centric, and initially I used to feel that this is, a, this is obviously, this has been a very push category. You don't, you know, wake up in the morning and say, hey, listen to that, go and buy health insurance. So literally we had to, that's why we are focusing on engagement, health, a lot of other areas of, you know, how we can nudge the customer. So we had a community and our health blog and you know driving a lot through health conversation but suddenly come pandemic and anyways there is a anxiety and fear around the health itself so suddenly the category actually became a very full category because today people are waking up and realizing that you know oh my god because i don't know what can happen to me or my family and then we keep hearing on the other side about the insurance and the medical covers and how much they've spent the at the hospitalization if you get if you've got covid so people are now waking up and thinking that am I adequately covered? Do I have adequate uh, health insurance coverage for my family? Or I don't have and I need one. So it's it's great time for a marketer, obviously, because it's a, you know, it's it's a pull category suddenly, which was very much a push category. But yes, having said that, we've also learned a lot through because uh, this thing happened, the whole lockdown happened, which was on the, on big months for us, you know, for JFM is very big, Jan Feb month. The period of you know the sales that we do and Feb March and literally an entire industry coming to I mean entire everything coming to a pause in your highest peak month, which is unheard of. And you're not even prepared of something like that. So obviously walking through this entire journey and create uh, and you know obviously creating a lot of digital uh, assets for the customers for our advice. Like I said, intermediaries is a one through which we deliver our promise to the consumer. So to create an entire digital uh, assets for them, they are whether it was a distributor app or whether it is self-servicing for the customer, entire digital journey end to end has by itself been a, you know, a challenging task and obviously so everything got prioritized. The other thing, what uh, what we did very interestingly because earlier on as a brand, like I said, we, we were empathetic uh, and our, uh, we were looking at consumers' health. And this is a time when we kept hearing from customers, stress, anxiety, fear of unknown, 
don't know what will happen to me or my family if you know if we get covid or so a lot of mental wellness a lot of you know depression and all that started happening so we created this entire uh, facebook live property called health from home where every day so we launched this on world health day in april and every day um, you know we used to have physical fitness trainers coming in nutrition trainers coming in mental uh, mental wellness uh, you know uh, professionals coming in and doctors coming in so doctors talking to senior citizen or women who are pregnant you know the two kids various things you know round every day for six days in a week yeah. we did that continuously for four months and we used to have a lot of people coming asking engaging which became more meaningful so this was a time when we were not pushing products we didn't want to be a brand who was you know trying sales because consumers are obviously not looking at sales and they, they wanted a partner who would sort of empathize and understand you know that is what we all were looking at that time so yeah. similar to uh, so those kind of things we've done we've launched them uh, taking care of them you know being there out there i mean looking out for them so a lot of these uh, kind of health from home properties and lot of partners including uh, you know celebrities like aditi govitrikar luke kutino mickey mehta a lot of them we've done so we created content again got them to engage with us and now we've in fact launched a new thing which is called sehat ki nayi aadat because we also realized that in unlock also it's not as open to go all out and people when they're doing their health you always have that health buddy that health companion with who would you know pull you in the morning to go for a walk or the run or, or you know your diet partner or something uh, suddenly all of that is out so if you're saying that now, now this year is all about family because look how you are locked in and you're working from home and you're all there together so how do you create that new you know health partner in your family so so that's the whole sehat ki nahi other that we've just launched taking from there so driving it through a lot of health content nudging consumers and and eventually taking a health insurance out there in fact we've partnered with vidya balan for our inter health insurance for women that you know why are women not waking up today women are doing everything and they're independent they're earning but when it comes to this health insurance they will not think about it and at the end of it then they get compromised so these are the kind of insights and these are kind of interesting so again using uh, using my mobile app using my customer portal you are using the entire facebook live you know series and these kind of content and these kind of campaigns we've tried building and again talking to our consumers so and apart from that of course uh, you know our, our regulator also has been very active we uh, all have got we've, we've launched so many new products including the corona so all short term products so 3 months 6 months corona coverage and all for corona focused coverage uh, products so those are also i mean it's interesting because we are launching products we are talking around health we are nudging our customers and uh, uh, and we've seen the highest growth in the industry so we are growing at 70% plus so i think all this is helping us for sure so yeah i think it's interesting no i think just uh... here you speak about everything that went on in the back end is uh, is incredible i think one thing that i can certainly uh, see that aditya bulla help did incredibly well was just this notion of being empathetic as opposed to being sales driven and i think it was so easy to latch into the fear and and just say hey you need a health insurance now uh, but i think the perspective of we are here for you and let's let's talk through this together i think that i i think it's no wonder that you've gotten the results that you've got so yeah congratulations on that yeah. thank you so much yeah so i think we've pretty much covered everything uh, so thanks a lot darshana uh, 